What's clear is that the outcome of this election is going to shape events far beyond America's borders. Well, to tell us more, I'm joined by our international affairs editor, Armin Georgian. Uh, Armin, President Trump has done things very differently um, from the outset of his presidency when you compare him to many of his predecessors, uh, not least in this realm of foreign relations. And I'm just wondering, uh, you know, he hasn't hesitated, has he, to tear up international agreements uh, over the years, has he? Well, his, his whole approach is that uh, America's hands must be free to act in its own interest. It doesn't want to be tied down by international agreements. Uh, so I want to recap the, the main international agreements that he has left uh, in, the la in these last four years. Uh, withdrawal from the Paris Climate Agreement, the Iranian nuclear deal, uh, the World Health Organization that hasn't actually come into effect yet but is supposed to in July of next year, withdrawal from the Trans-Pacific Partnership, uh, UNESCO, the UN Human Rights Council, and ending funding for the UN Relief and Works Agency. So you can see, uh, really not a fan of the UN uh, Trans-Pacific Partnership, obviously emblematic of the kind of multilateral trade framework that uh, he doesn't like. And those first two, uh, the Iranian nuclear deal and the Paris Climate Agreement, are obviously of key importance to uh, the traditional EU allies of the US, uh, such as France and Germany. So I'm sure that France and Germany will tonight be uh, hoping uh, for a Biden presidency, which obviously would go back into uh, the Iranian nuclear agreement and, and the Paris climate uh, agreement as well. OK, the eyes of the election very much, uh, the eyes of the world rather, very much on this election, notably uh, in the Middle East. And of course, the Trump administration has been very busy in the Middle East in, uh, well, from, from the outset, really. Um, now, who in the Middle East wants another four years of Donald Trump and who doesn't? Well, essentially, if you look at any uh, Middle Eastern leadership that had problems with the Obama administration, uh, and things have been smoothed out during the last four years of, of Donald Trump's presidency. So that would be uh, Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel, who had difficult relationships with Democratic presidents. Uh, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi in Egypt had a difficult relationship with the, the Obama administration. Uh, we've had uh, the Saudi leadership as well, which had, if there were some rocky patches, things are much smoother now uh, since uh, Donald Trump's been uh, in office. Uh, uh, so, so that would be uh, just just a few examples. And of course, he's broken with cons this consensus of the US, at least trying to give the impression of being uh, a, a kind of neutral broker between Israel and the Palestinians. That's probably the, the single biggest change in the Trump presidency. He broke that bipartisan consensus on Israel. Uh, let's just bring you a graphic to give you a few of the key points of tr Trump's presidency in the Middle East. He moved the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem, presented that peace to prosperity plan, uh, which essentially sidelined the Palestinians' political aspirations. Uh, Trump brokering those Bahrain, Israel, and U. AE Israel agreements. Uh, part of the, the point of those agreements was to put pressure on Iran. Uh, now, that campaign of pressure has been happening through the reinstatement of US sanctions on Iran, as well as through the assassination of Iranian General Qasem Soleimani. Uh, Trump also pledging to end foreign wars, hence troop withdrawals or drawdowns from Syria and Iraq. Trump also trying to project an image of a tough commander-in-chief, uh, therefore uh, ordering an assassination of ISIS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi and carrying out that airstrike on the state of Syria uh, over the use of chemical weapons. OK, so uh, two long lists there uh, from you, Armand Georgian. Thank you very much indeed. Those lists in, uh, Absolutely. Well, very informative. Thank you so much.